Amen, amen. God bless you, family. God, welcome to the morning Devo with your brother DJ Sam Rock. This is the start of a new week. This is a Monday morning early for me. This is like pretty much afternoon for a lot of people who usually get up early. I'm a night owl, not an early bird. So shout out to all the early birds out there. Welcome to the morning Devo as well. So listen, how do you know for sure that God has shown you something, that God has revealed something to you? How do you, how can you know for sure? How can you know that it's not something that you're imagining? How can you know something um, that you're wishfully thinking of and now it's becoming like kind of like an altered reality? How do you know or how can you know, right, that God has revealed something to you? That he really has shown you something through his word, through his spirit, um, through his prophetic ways. How can you know it's God? other than maybe something you ate last night or anything like that. Well, we're going to talk about that, and we're going to see it in the scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 to 11. We're going to see in the scripture how that all pans out, how that all works out. Because if God is not showing you anything, right? And to be honest, if he has never shown me anything, then why would I even rely on him to do anything? If he's not showing me something or if he's not showing you something, well, why would you follow him? If he's not giving you uh, like a conversation, if he's not giving you, uh, how you call it, if he's not giving you insight on life. And I'm not talking about like type of things that you need not know. Like I don't need to know everything. And, and God knows I don't need to know everything. Because if I had known what I was going to go through from the time I said yes to him all the way to this very day, then he knows very well that I would have opted out. I would have been like, nah, I'm, I don't want a part of that. But he revealed himself to me personally. That's how I knew he was real in my life. How can you, you really know that God revealed something to you in your life? That's what we're going to talk about today on the Morning Devo. So let me just give some blessings and some good mornings uh, to some people who are joining us. Brother Damien, good morning. God bless you, brother. Welcome to the Morning Devo. It's good to see you. So... Well, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, and also shout out to all the podcast listeners that are over at soulwinnerswithaz.org listening live, uh, welcome to the Morning Devo. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, um, there's always a way to connect with me from whatever platform you're watching or from whatever platform you're listening to me. There's always a way to connect. So don't be afraid to connect. If you, anything, you have question, comment, concern, prayer requests, uh, I know a lot of things are happening to families all over that I know um, people losing loved ones and, and sickness and all kind of things happening. So I know there should be a lot of prayer requests going on. Amen. I pray every day, and not because it's a religious thing to do, not because it's a traditional thing to do, not because I have to. It's because I know the power of prayer. So I pray every day because I don't know anything that's going to happen every day. I don't know. As soon as my eyes open, it's a new day. It's a new day for you. It's a new day for me. But I choose. I'm one of those people that choose to be glad for another day, to rejoice in what's happening in my life today. Because tomorrow is not promised. Yesterday is far away and we have the present right now. So I decided to devote the first of my time to the Lord. How about you? So if you're with me and you're on here, and you're listening or you're watching, then you're doing it. You're getting involved in what God has for your life. And that way, you can know when God speaks to you. You can know when God reveals something to you. You can truly know that it's really God. And it's not you. It's not me. It's not um, forces of the unknown or whatever spiritual thing that you might be thinking you're in. No, I believe in Holy Spirit God, the Spirit of God. And we're going to see what 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 and 11 says through the Apostle Paul, which was inspired to write these words down. So many years ago, yet we read it today, and it's so relevant to what's happening in our life. So let's pray. I don't see any prayer requests or any comments like that right now. So let's pray. Uh, let's set this off, this week off in the Lord. Amen. I thank you, Lord Jesus, right now for accepting uh, me as your son and providing a safe net uh, for me to live this life 
in wholeness and in fullness. And I pray that over every single listener, every single viewer right now, that they and their family will be charged by the Holy Spirit of God, will be enlightened by the knowledge and wisdom that God is going to give us today. I pray a hedge of protection over every single family member in my family and in everyone's family that's watching. In Jesus' name, I pray for Arkwin angels, ministering angels, warring angels to every single residence, every single place of business, every single um, job site, everywhere that people find themselves or find other people. Let your spirit, God, be the main factor of the day today. In Jesus' name, I pray this by faith. Amen and amen. So God reveals things and and if you know him, you know it has to be him that reveals certain things in your life. Amen? If I know something already, then I don't think that's a revelation from God because I already knew, knew it. I already known it. And if I'm nosy enough, maybe I could spoil some surprises. Maybe I could spoil this, that, and a third. But I don't know what's going to happen a minute, 10 minutes, an hour from now. But God knows all things. Yet, he decides whether or not he wants to reveal things to us. Right? So his revelation is the best revelation. When he shows us something, when he reveals something in our life, it really matters. It really makes sense. And even if it doesn't make sense, let me speak to the people who are going through things right now that it seems like God is absent, that he's not there, that it's not making sense. God is still in control of all things, good and bad, good and bad. Why would a Christian talk about anything happening bad when they're talking about God? Because we live in a fallen world of bad people. That means bad things happen even to good people, so-called good people. But my question would be, why do good things happen to bad people? So there's always two sides of the coin in every situation. So let's take a minute to share this out with as many people as we can. So grab your device, grab your laptop, cell phone, whatever, and share this out. If you know somebody right now that doesn't have social media, no problem. Send them right there to the site, soulwinnerswithaz.org, and they could view this right now or they could listen in. Amen. I prefer you listen uh, because of that way you can concentrate on what you're doing unless you have time to sit and be with us live on the video. So I'll be right back after this minute. Let's go for it. Uh, let's challenge ourselves to really be part of what God has for us today, right? Because one of the Holy Spirit's jobs, one of his jobs is, according to this verse, is to reveal things to us. Amen? According to this verse that we're going to get in. According to these two verses we're going to get into. So let's go for it. Let's take a minute. And when we come back, we'll be in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. I'll be right back. That minute is incredibly fast, I'm telling you. So revealed by the Spirit, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. But it was to us that God revealed these things by His Spirit. By whose Spirit, first and foremost. I know it's right there, but by whose Spirit? Because people talk about spiritualism and all this other stuff. But we're talking about the Spirit of God. Not Spirit of a statue, not Spirit of some kind of saint, not a Spirit of a lost loved one, not a Spirit or ghost like people think we're talking about the spirit of god his spirit for his spirit searches out everything and shows us god's deep secrets so wait a minute god has secrets yeah he has deep secrets that he wants to reveal to us and it's not something to like scare us although it might be scary it's not for us to be you know all proud you know, and say, okay, I'm a prophet now because I know all these deep secrets. No, it's not for that either. It's to humble us and to show us that God knows things before we know things. 
Science can't prove God doesn't exist, and science can't really prove that God does exist. It's only by his spirit that he reveals what he wants to reveal to us, to mankind. Let's keep on going. No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. So that wipes out um, those people who say they can read your mind. That wipes that out right there. No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. I always tell people, you want to read the mind of God? Read his word. His word is his will. You want to know the will of God over your life? The word of God is the will over your life and over my life. So there's no wordplay here. Apostle Paul is saying, listen, nobody, nobody could read your mind except your own spirit that's inside searching your mind out. You know, you go to psychics. Listen, if you go to psychics, yeah, they wire you. They might wire you because whatever you said or whatever your family member said or whatever people said against you or whatever goes into the air. They verbally said it goes into the air and there's stuff in the air, demons in the air, angels in the air. Right. So if there's people or not people, excuse me, angelic beings in the air, don't you think that they could listen and understand our language and transfer that information that they're that you just heard you say to a so-called psychic who's really kind of like connected with these demons and these spirits and these things in the air? And then it could drop that um, revelation to them. So that way, when you show up, they look at you and be like, oh, this is the person that 10 years ago said this was going to happen. And then you're wild by it because you're like, oh, wow, how did they know that? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, because there's a spiritual realm that we can't see or touch. But when God shows up in that spiritual realm that people are all, you know, all fuzzy and crazy about sometimes, he gives us clarity, he gives us revelation, right? And it's like not insane. It's a sane thing. No, I'm not going crazy. No, you're not going crazy for believing in the voice of God and understanding that he reveals things to us. So what is the one thing like what is the what is one of the Holy Spirit's jobs, according to this verse that we just read? What is one of his jobs? <clears throat> right. It seems to me that one of the jobs of spirit of God, <clears throat> Holy Spirit, is to reveal things to us by his spirit. Right. Because there's a lot of spirits right going on. I watch um, these deliverance services and sometimes I don't know because I'm, I'm looking to see if truly that is from the Lord. Oh, well, what do you mean? Um, these people are, you know, popular um, evangelists, pastors, teachers, apostles, whatever. And they, they're laying hands on the people and people are getting delivered. Are they really getting delivered? Or um, I've heard of stories that people rehearse these deliverance services. I know I'm going to make a lot of people mad right now. But people rehearse deliverance services. So they pick out people and they say, okay, when you're going to come from the right side of the audience, you're going to come from the left side, and I'm going to give you a prophecy, and you're going to say, yeah, we never met, blah, blah, blah. And people rehearse that. Why? Because they're charlatans and they want your money. So after the miracles or after the revelation or after the prophecy it is shown to the masses, and then they look at you and they ask for a seed to sow into that. Some people do that, and they're going to be judged by the Lord. That's between them and the Lord. But how about the people who are real, right? That's why it makes it hard for a believer to share the gospel sometimes because a lot of nonsense is going on in Christianity. But in the kingdom of God, there's not a lot of nonsense. In the kingdom of God, there's power, there's love, there's grace, there's mercy, and there's revelation from God. So it makes it harder for me as when I say I'm a Christian, people are so like hesitant to, um, you know, buy it to understand it or to even want to ask questions about it or to really believe me because they see a lot of nonsense and the nonsense that's being shown is popular but then the trueness of god's love grace and mercy the true prophets the true apostles evangelists uh, pastors teachers uh we get the bad end of the stick sometimes amen i'm considering myself a real christian because i follow the real lord of the real bible and the real scriptures and God, through his spirit, reveals things to me. Amen. And sometimes I do a double check and I'll be like, wait a minute. Is that is that you, Lord? Because that's crazy or, you know, that doesn't sound right or I can't believe that or something like that. Yeah, it does wow me when God reveals something. It should wow you too. Because you know by your own merit or by your own self, you will never understand or never known things that God reveals to us. So I think one of 
the Holy Spirit's jobs, according to this verse, is that he will reveal things to us by his spirit. Why? Because his spirit is the one who searches out everything. The spirit of God searches everything. Amen. And he has the time. He has the power. Right. He's omnipresent, all knowing, all powerful, almighty. Amen. All loving, all holy. Amen. All just. He's the God of heaven and of earth. And he searches out the hearts of men and the hearts of women. He does it. Not us. Um, you could go to psychics if you want. The Bible says the Bible doesn't condone it. The word of God doesn't condone that. Actually, the Bible says stay away from psychics and all these people who say they have all this magical, mystical powers. And maybe it might seem like they have a form of godliness or a form of power, but it's not the power of God. Amen. Although they take drips and drabs from what God has already placed on this planet, has already established on this earth. Energy. People call the spirit energy sometimes. Or oh, my Jehovah Witness friends call the spirit of God a force. Like some kind of like Star Wars saga. No. God is not a force. And God is not energy. God is a person. The person of God. By way of Holy Spirit. So... You know, if you want to say Father, Son, Holy Spirit, that's great because there's three persons, three personalities, one God. Amen. So it's three and one. No, not three gods. Not God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit as all three different gods. No, it's three personality, three persons, one God. That's the way the scripture um, reveals God. And his revelation is his revelation. It's the revelation. Like if you look at the last book of the New Testament, it says revelation. Is one revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. He revealed to uh, John, right, the revelator in that book, things that are coming, right? And John must have been just like anybody would have been blown away. Like, wow, he's seeing like a movie of things that are going to happen right in front of his face. And God revealed that. So, have you ever felt that God has revealed something to you? And that's the question. That's where everything gets personal now. Have you ever felt that God has revealed something to you? And I hear a lot of yeses. Amen. Even though nobody's right admitting that. I hear a lot of yeses. But then now people are really like or really think about it. Right. Is that really from God or is that my imagination? Well, let's think about imagination for a minute. At least my imagination. It goes real quick. Like. For instance, my thoughts are like like super fast. I don't even think um, any kind of meter can really measure the speed of my thoughts or your thoughts. My, my imagination could take me to a lot of different places, yeah. Um, but a lot of times my imagination doesn't get results like in reality. It's just uh, imagination, something that I imagine. Or I imagine being here. I imagine doing this. I imagine owning that. Um, that's the imagination. But when you get revelation from God, Right. Things actually come to pass. You might be like, well, God told me 20 years ago that this was going to happen. Well, continue to believe in that word, because I know I had to wait on a lot of things of what God told me and told my family. But it came to pass. Now, had I thought it was my imagination, then it, I would not even remember it, the word of God. If it was the word of God, then, you know, you remember if it's your imagination. A lot of times you just forget because at the time and at the moment that you imagined something, that thing is gone. But when God speaks a word over your life and reveals something in my life and in your life, then you know to hold on to that revelation. You hold on to the word of God. You don't let it go like, oh, it's, you know, that was just my imagination. No, it's the word of God over your life. So count on it. Bank on it. It's true. It's, it's going to happen. If God says a thing, it is a thing. If God promises you something, that promise is going to come to pass. 100% of the time. It's not a 50-50 chance. This is not gambling with your eternity. It's not gambling with your life. It's revelation of God. So revealed by the Spirit. The Word says, No one can know a person's thoughts except, except that person's own spirit. And that should be common sense. You know, uh, that should be common. You don't know what I'm thinking right now. Oh, I know there's somebody in the spirit realm saying, Oh, I could, I could get your thoughts. I know what you're, I know what you're thinking right now. And, you know, I don't want to play the game. Okay, go ahead, prove it and those other stuff. No, because like I said earlier, I probably said something maybe when I was a kid. And um, these demonic hosts hold what you say and they could take it and transfer it to any person they want. 
that's trying to get in tune with some some people actually think they're in tune with Holy Spirit God when in all actuality they're in tune with demons. Some people pray to statues and they think they're you know connecting with uh, uh, the Spirit of God, but they're actually connecting with the unholy spirit. Some people think they have all this psychic energy and the psychic power, and they're actually in, being influenced by demonic influencers. So we need to be careful. The Word of God says to search. Um, to test all spirits, right? To test, test, you need to test my spirit. I'm gonna test your spirit. Like this whole thing about, oh, I, I go to church. I'm a Christian. Uh, I test that spirit real quick, and it's easy to test that spirit. Here's a spoiler, a spoiler alert for everybody who says, oh yeah, I'm a Christian. I go to church. Well, the Bible says only if we have the Spirit of God can we say, you know, that Jesus is Lord. So praise God. Somebody says, oh, I go to church. Oh, amen. Are you Christian? Oh, yeah. Amen. So is Jesus your Lord? And if they can't say it, then the Bible says they're not of me. Because only the Spirit of God reveals who he is. The Spirit of God reveals who the Lord Jesus is. Jesus reveals himself to us. We don't come to God and like say, here we are. You know, uh, we found you. No, God finds us. God has never been lost. I was lost. I don't know about you, but I was lost in the sauce. Right. God found me. So by his spirit, he revealed himself to me. And I know thousands and millions and hundreds of millions of people that can testify the same thing, that God showed up in their life and revealed himself to them and revealed so many things and free them from addictions, from, from issues that they could never by themselves get out of, mental illness, all this God delivered, freed, healed, all of that because he searched us out. He searches the heart of men. Amen. He knows every single thing about you and every single thing about me. Some people who may be, may be freaked out about that right now. He knows all. Yeah, he knows everything. But nobody knows. Yeah, God knows though. There's secrets, deep secrets that he has and he wants to reveal it to us. No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. For his spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. The secrets belong to God. That's why I always say that God doesn't owe us any explanation. So if I ask God a question and I say, God, you know, I need an answer to this. It's, he's not obligated to answer me. And for the mockers, the mockers that say, oh, if your God is real, let him strike me with lightning right now then. As if you could provoke a holy, loving God. As, you, as if you could provoke a God who is slow to anger, slow to wrath. Why would God have to respond to somebody say, okay, strike me then, then if you're real. Um, I don't know what God you're talking about. Uh, my God is not provoked by a mocker. It's not. It's like, oh man, I got to prove myself to this mocker. And then on the other end, people say, how, do, how can you know that God is real for sure? Like, how do you know? And then, well, you say, you share your experience, your testimony, and they'll they'll delete that. And be like, oh no, that's only that's only because you believe that. That's your truth, not mine. And that, then relativism comes into the thing. So many people have so many different reasons why they don't believe. But those reasons actually are excuses, in my opinion. Because if you really want to search out the things of God, God will show up and reveal himself to you. And a lot of people are freaked out about that. They mean, oh, you mean to tell me, Sam, all I have to do is present myself to God and ask him to come into my life. Ask him to forgive me and that he'll be there. He'll reveal himself. Um, that's a high probability of God revealing himself through that channel than there is through you or anybody that you know trying to falsify his claims or trying to make up things that God himself didn't even say in his word or just trying to go into church and saying that you're a Christian because you sit sit down in a chair in a building. Are you kidding me? If you want to be honest with yourself, amen, and you want God to reveal something to you right now, go to him. Don't come to me. Don't go to your pastors or anything. Right now, you could go to God right now and ask some things Test God's spirit. Ask some things that you know that you're the only one who knows about. Amen. God knows all about you. And on the opposite of that, the enemy knows a lot about us too. So that's why we have to be careful and know whose who's spirit is speaking. What spirit is speaking? Is it Holy Spirit God or unholy spirit of the enemy? You will never know until you get into a personal relationship with the God of the scriptures. The God of the Christians. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, when I don't know anything to do, when things are happening in life and I don't know what to say, what to do, I call on the name of Jesus. 
And every single time I do that, he shows up and reveals something to me. It could be that you're driving up the road and you feel something that's not right. No cars around you, no nothing. But yet you stop, you pull over because you, you listen to the voice of God. You feel the spirit of God. Pull over and then boom. At the time that you would have been at a stop sign or a stop light or a traffic light, it's a big accident. And that's that wouldn't be good for anybody in any situation. It's not to be happy about. I'm just saying, could it be that sometimes when you're running late, you can't find your keys or you know something happened right before you had to be somewhere? Could it be that that's God showing up on behalf of you or sending an angel or stopping or altering uh, 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 or detouring us so that way we would be safe and we could return safely back to our homes and our families? Could it be that? Or I know people believe in karma and people believe in luck. I don't believe in karma. I don't believe in luck either. And nah, I'm not going for that. But I do believe in Holy Spirit God and he's revealing things to every single believer right now as we speak. Have you ever felt that God has revealed something to you? And if so, what was it? So you could answer these questions. I know um, nobody's responding right now. These are like deep issues to a lot of people and these are personal things. But if you want to respond, you can at any time during this video, during when you watch it or when you listen to the podcast, just respond and think about it. And so that way we can search your own thoughts out, right? As God searches our thoughts, we can search our thoughts out too. And we know personally what was of God or what was of us. And the things that we confused about, that we're not sure if it was from God or if it was something that we ate last night or whatever, then God will show us hit through his spirit what it really was. Because God is a relational God. God's not just a God that we read about and have no connection with. God is a God who connects from heaven to earth. Amen. The gospel is God connecting with us. Religion is us trying to connect with God. That's how you can tell the difference between the two. So I hope you got something out of here. I'm, I'm done. First Corinthians chapter 2 verses 10 through 11. Read the whole chapter for yourself. First Corinthians chapter 2. So make sure I'm not taking this out of context. But God revealed his word, his love, his grace, his mercy, demonstrated his own love on the cross, demonstrating his own love in this, that while I still hated him, that while I still was a sinner, while you were still a sinner, God still died for us. That's the greatest revelation or one of the greatest revelations that he showed us in his scripture. He demonstrated himself as the living sacrifice to die in our on our behalf. So that way we can live and not only live just to get by, scratch and scrape just to get by. No, to live a life in abundance. That's a revelation from God. That's only something that God could speak. Now, remember, there was a, an instance that Jesus asked his own disciples, who do you say that I am? And his own disciples saying, you're this, you're that. And then there's only one disciple says, you're the son of the living God, right? You're the savior of the world. And Jesus said, only, only the spirit could reveal that to you. No man can give that information to you except by spirit. So God speaks of his spirit. Jesus spoke of the spirit. It's, it's a person. Um, the spirit is he, the Holy Spirit, not a force, right? Not energy. God is not just energy, although he has all the energy, but he's not just energy. I'm not speaking to the universe. Amen. God is creator of the universe. So you won't catch me speaking all that on all those new age terms and all this uh, spirituality terms or just talk to the universe or put it out into the universe. Sounds sounds cool, um, but that's not the spirit of God. It actually sounds kind of like um, sci-fi-ish, you know what I'm saying? Just speak to the universe. Okay. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I, I watch Star Trek too, the old episodes, and I know about science fiction and all that stuff. It sounds cool to me, the universe. Oh, now I'm talking about the God of the universe. Amen. So let's let's take our thoughts up a notch and let's see about the one who searches out our thoughts and who revealed these things by his spirit. First Corinthians chapter 2, 10 to 11. I'm out of here. God bless you. God keep you. Remember always that God is good. I hope you have a great day and a great week. And hopefully we can get back together tonight for the blaze 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. God bless. Peace.